All right, so we're going to look at um, electromagnetic waves and intensity of the energy that electromagnetic waves carry. Okay, so first a little bit of review. So we know from before we've looked at the Maxwell's equations. So we know the speed of light we can get from Maxwell's equations, and it's 1 over the square root of mu naught epsilon naught, where mu naught and epsilon naught are the magnetic constant and the electric constant. Okay, so we can also get the speed of a wave, right, any electromagnetic wave, from the ratio of the electric field to the magnetic field. Right, so if you just divide the electric field component of that electromagnetic wave divide the mag divided by the magnetic field component, that'll give you the speed of the wave, right? And I'm not using C because this works for any wave, right? Because remember, well, we haven't done this yet, but when you put a, an electromagnetic wave, like a ray of light through like a piece of glass or something or water, the wave actually slows down. It doesn't travel at the speed of light. It travels a little bit slower, right? But we'll get to that when we get to like Snell's Law and stuff, okay? So the speed of the wave you can get from that. And then kind of review, you should know this already, but power is the rate at which you use energy, right? So power is just energy divided by time. Okay, so let's define intensity. Intensity is power over area. So um, how much power you have that hits a specific area. So the best example like to think about this is sunlight. So imagine like an area of sunlight hitting the ground, right? If I take that and you use like a magnifying glass, like have you ever done that, like use a magnifying glass to like fry ants, you're taking the same like area that would hit the ground and you're focusing it on a smaller area so you have a bigger intensity. There's more energy per unit time hitting a smaller area, right? So it's kind of like pressure. When you decrease the area, you increase the pressure. Okay, so let's imagine this as an antenna like we looked at before, right? So here's an antenna, right? And we're going to pretend this is a point source, okay? So... This antenna is broadcasting a signal, right? And so we looked at it before as just a little wave moving out. But remember, it's almost like when you throw a rock in a pond, the wave spreads out. So in reality, what it looks like is this, sort of. I mean, not really, but it's broadcasting in all directions, right? So if you had your receiver over here somewhere, you're not going to get the full amount of energy that's coming off of this radio tower. Right? Because as it moves out, it spreads out. So if you were closer, see how you get more? Because that sphere is smaller. So the area, right, if you're modeling this as a point source, the area is equal to the area of a sphere. So for a point source, the intensity is going to be the power over 4 pi r squared, where r is just how far away your receiver is from the antenna that's broadcasting. Another way we can get the intensity is from the pointing vector. So we can say the intensity is equal to the magnitude of the pointing vector, right? And so if you remember, the pointing vector was the one where you take your right-hand rule and your electric field is your thumb and your magnetic field is your fingers and you cross them and it shows you the velocity, right? To get the pointing vector, it's one over mu naught times the electric field crossed with the magnetic field, right? And it's a cross product. We were talking about we're not gonna be able to calculate it, but we can simplify it, right? Because if I take the cross product of the electric and the magnetic field, remember cross products are how perpendicular the vectors are. So the electric field and the magnetic field are directly perpendicular, right? Because that's what makes the electromagnetic wave go. So when you do it, right, if you remember when you do cross products, you multiply by the sine of theta. And so if two things are perpendicular, the angle between them is 90 degrees. And so the sine of 90 is 1. So this will end up just being 1 over mu naught times EB, right? Where this is the RMS value of each of these, right? So remember, you have waves... The RMS value is kind of like the, the average of where everything was at because you have it going up and down and up and down, right? RMS is like the average. So I can use the pointing vector to figure out the intensity. So let's simplify this a little bit. So I know that an RMS value is equal to whatever the max value is over square root 2, right? That's the definition of RMS. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to plug it in here, and I'm going to simplify it. Okay, so what I did, this S with the brackets around it, that means the magnitude of that vector, right? So we know the magnitude of that vector is going to give us the intensity. So that's equal to 1 over mu naught. I plugged in max over root 2 for the electric field and the magnetic field, right? So this is the max value, the, the amplitude over root 2 times the max value of the magnetic field over root 2, right? Those root 2s multiply together, right, because they're in the denominator. So square root of 2 times square root of 2 is 2. So it gives me 1 over 2 mu naught, E max, B max, right? And I just simplify, and I get this, 
Okay, so let's get another version of this to make it easy, right? So a lot of times when you're talking about electromagnetic waves, the electric field component is going to be big. The magnetic field component is going to be small. And plus, most of the time when you're talking about creating an electromagnetic wave, it's usually from some electric field being created in a, like an antenna or something, right? For at least for low energy waves. So let's put this in simpler terms, get it all in terms of the electric field, right? So I, what I can do is I can take, I know that the speed of light is equal to the electric field divided by the magnetic field, right? The, the magnitudes of them. So I'm going to take this and I can solve it for B and I'm going to plug it in here. My magnetic field is equal to the electric field divided by C, right? So I'm going to use the maximum value of the amplitude. So I plug that in here, E over C, right? And that C moves to the denominator. So E squared divided by 2 mu naught C gives me the magnitude of the pointing vector, which gives me the intensity. So something interesting to note, this value right there, mu naught C, that mu naught C is what's called the impedance of free space, right? And if you multiply that, because they're both constants, that comes out to a number, right? So mu naught is a constant, C is a constant, right? So if I multiply those out, you get 377 ohms, right? That's a constant value. And sometimes you'll see that symbolized as the Greek letter nu. So this, what it represents, it's called the impedance of free space. So if you remember um, what we were talking about with like capacitors and inductors, how they have a resistance, but it's not really like a real resistance, but it acts like a resistance, sort of, right? Same concept. So free space has an impedance also to electric and magnetic fields. And that value, the impedance of free space is 377 ohms, right? And so now... I have multiple ways to get the intensity of an electromagnetic wave, either treating it as a point source or treating it as an electromagnetic wave. Okay, so let's review that real quick. So I have two ways I can look at an electromagnetic wave. So the first one was treat this like a point source. So I have this radio and it's broadcasting, right? And so it's just part of a sphere. So if I put my antenna over here, Right? Obviously, you can tell that I'll have less energy here than if I put my antenna here because more of this energy, it hasn't spread out as much by the time it got to here. Right, So that's why when we're talking about uh, electromagnetic waves as a point source, it's the power over 4 pi r squared. So the bigger r gets, right? the further you get away, the more you're spreading out that energy right? and the less of it you're going to get. Right? So if you were further out here, you're going to get even less of this whole pi that's spreading out. The other way you can model it is your electric and magnetic fields in two dimensions. So if we look at it this way, this magnetic field and this electric field are always perpendicular to each other. right? So we can say that the intensity, we can get it from the pointing vector, that the product of the electric field and the magnetic field amplitudes, right? So not the RMS value, but the, when it says the amplitude of those waves, divided by 2 mu naught, that'll give you the intensity, right? And then I can get it in terms of the electric field itself, because the electric field is usually going to be a bigger number than the magnetic field. I can get it in terms of just the, the electric field amplitude by using this equation.